This is the Scepter C305B ultra-wide monitor. This is right now the most popular ultra-wide monitor on Amazon, and I think it might just be the perfect combo for mini PCs. So we're going to be taking a look at this display hooked up to the Minus Forum UM780 XTX, currently my favorite mini PC on the market right now. This is, of course, rocking an AMD Ryzen 7 8740HS, and that has a Radeon 780M integrated graphics. So that is 12 RDNA 3 cores running at a max clock speed of 2700 megahertz. It still blows my mind that integrated graphics today can actually have clock speeds as high as 2.7 gigahertz. I remember the days when integrated graphics were pretty much in the hundreds of megahertz. But what makes this display impressive, at least to me, is the fact that it is one of the cheapest ultra wide displays on the market today and it actually has a refresh rate of 200 hertz now the secret sauce that makes this to me a great combo for mini pcs is actually the fact that the resolution that it has is essentially ultra wide 1080p that's right it has a resolution of 2560 by 1080 what that effectively means is that it is like a 1080p display but it has extra resolution on the sides and that over Overall, makes the entire experience of using a display like this a lot more immersive and in a lot of titles it will actually make it so that you see more information on the screen you essentially get a wider FOV and because it's essentially just 1080p with some extra pixels on the side it is a lower resolution than 1440p so it should be significantly less demanding on our hardware so let's see what kind of performance we can actually get out of the radeon 780m in this mini pc so the first game actually mountain blade 2 banner lord now the reason being is that this is one of my favorite games and also it's one that I frequently tested on this channel across a wide variety of different systems. So I kind of know what kind of performance to expect out of this game. And running with the medium in-game graphics settings, I was really impressed by the result that we ended up getting here. Now, yes, it wasn't a 60 FPS average, but I want you to pay attention to those frame times. They're extremely, extremely smooth throughout the entirety of this benchmark, which means that you are going to have a very nice and consistent gaming experience. And the ultra wide resolution here actually does make a difference because you can see a wider field of view. And when you're playing a game like this, where there are these large battles happening, where there are enemies all over the place, having all of that extra screen real estate actually does give you more information. And knowing that it's actually playable at this resolution was really Really impressive to me. So I decided to take a look at another game that is also a very frequent test here on this channel and that is Batman Arkham Knight. And running with the high in-game graphics settings here again we're getting a similar situation where it's not a 60 FPS average but those 1% lows and those FPS averages are very very close to each other. And if you look at those frame time charts, they are very smooth and very consistent. That means that this is actually going to be a very playable experience here. And if you want to boost that FPS, you could always turn down some of those graphics settings. But the fact that we're using the high graphics settings and we're getting this playable of an experience with an ultra wide display is really, really awesome. Especially because again, a game like this is extremely cinematic. So having that extra field of view really helps to make a game like this feel a lot more immersive. Another title that really impressed me was actually Tiny Tina's Wonderland running here with the medium in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR at the quality preset. So we're not even getting aggressive with our FSR setting here and we're still able to get a pretty great overall result in our FPS average and our 1% lows. The 1% lows seem to have struggled at the very beginning of the benchmark, but as things progressed, things pretty much leveled off. And if you look at those frame time charts, you'll occasionally see a spike here and there. This is something that seems to be inherent with the Borderlands franchise in general. It always tended to have this stuttering problem across most hardware, but for the most part, it's not really going to be a problem when you're actually playing through the game. And of course, the impressive results also carry over to Borderlands 3 if you're a bigger fan of the mainline Borderlands games and don't really like any of their side games, then you'll be happy to know that the performance in this title here is also really fantastic, as you should expect since it is an older title than Tiny Tina's Wonderland, but 
We've seen from different titles before that just because a title is older doesn't necessarily mean it's going to perform better. Luckily here, this does give us a pretty great result. Of course, it's important to stress that all games are not going to run equally on here. And as you can see with a title like Metro Exodus, which is at this point surprisingly a few years old, it's still extremely demanding. And while at the beginning of the benchmark, the performance numbers look pretty damn great, things really start to fall apart once we get to about the midsection where we're in a more open environment and in general the result that we got out of this was not exactly impressive at all though this kind of carries over from when you try to play the game on a regular 1080p resolution instead of ultra wide so it's not like you're really missing out on a game that you would have otherwise been able to play really unless of course you're willing to mess around with things like fsr upscaling which actually you can do in some titles with an ultra wide display now not all games support natively lower ultra wide resolution so it's not going to work on every title out there but in a surprising amount of them you can actually use fsr upscaling through magpie or lossless scaling to boost the performance of course i think it's important to stress to you guys that the ultra wide life is not perfect by any means in a lot of titles like world war z here you'll get weird ui issues where it becomes very apparent that the assets that they use were really only designed for 16 by 9 displays and you get weird issues like this a lot of the times it's UIs more than anything that end up being the biggest problems of course it doesn't mean that the games are going to be unplayable it's just that a lot of the times it'll just be very inconvenient quirks that will pop up and in the worst case scenarios there are some titles out there that will actually just zoom into a 16 by 9 image essentially so what you're getting is a cropped image so by using ultra wide you actually end up getting less less information on the screen than more. Now this isn't every title and with more modern titles this is less and less of a problem. If you're someone that frequently plays a wide variety of different games you might find yourself running into a lot more issues than most people. That said though that extra FOV is actually pretty nice once you really start to play with it. I've always been a big fan of ultra wide displays. I just wish that their support across windows was just a little bit better. There's still a lot of titles that come out that don't really have native ultra ultra wide support and it can get really annoying. But I mean, while playing Mordhau on this display, I found myself having a really great time because the display, even though it's only as tall as a 24 inch display, the 16 by nine, that extra width really helps to make a display that would normally feel pretty average or relatively small feel a lot more immersive. It really makes a lot of sense to me why this ended up becoming the most popular ultra wide display on Amazon. For the price, you really get a pretty fantastic experience. And I think it is a great entry point for ultra wide gaming because at least it's not going to be a huge financial investment. And it really makes playing games like Prey here, which is one of my favorite games that I've played recently. I'm a huge fan of immersive Sims. And a title like this is actually one that plays really really well with a display like this it really helps to get you sucked into the game and one thing that i appreciate is actually that again because of the fact that height wise it's about as tall as a 24 inch 16 by 9 display the overall footprint is not that big it actually fits pretty well on my relatively small corner of my desk here but of course, it does inherently make games more demanding because you have more pixels that need to be rendered. So you're going to find that titles that you were essentially barely able to play might just end up going into territory where it is no longer an enjoyable experience. I would recommend maybe messing around with FSR and seeing if that could solve the problems for you. But I think that if you're at the edge of playability at regular 16 by 9 1080p, then this definitely is not going to be a good move for you. In a game like Miles Morales, I had to get pretty aggressive with the FSR settings to actually get this to perform around the level of what I was expecting out of this hardware at 16 by 9 1080p. And bringing down FSR from the balanced preset down to perform performance can be pretty rough in a lot of segments. But I found the experience of actually playing some of the titles that I really like to play, like Conan Exiles here. 
it performs about as well as it does on my desktop really now of course i had to lower the graphics settings in comparison but the game itself has always had a one percent low issues so in general the experience of playing this is actually pretty comparable to my desktop of course at just lower visual quality settings but you take that extra fov and extra resolution in gaming and combine that with just the extra screen real estate while just using your computer on a day-to-day -day basis it really is a a very compelling option especially because this display is a lot cheaper than even some 16 by 9 displays out there now of course there are some caveats to all of this we are talking about a VA panel VA panels inherently have transition issues in comparison to LCDs and OLEDs so what that means is that as it's transitioning from one pixel to the next to the next to the next so that it can render the next frame it's just transitioning way too slow Slow to actually keep up so this display is rated for 200 hertz if you're using display port you can definitely set that in the windows settings and it definitely feels like it is fast but because of the ghosting that happens with va panels it doesn't really feel as smooth as 200 hertz really should but i also do think that people kind of exaggerate how bad va panels really are i mean the way that people talk about them on reddit you'd think that looking at this would give you actual motion sickness i I've seen YouTube comments where people pretty much talk about how they would rather have a TN panel than a VA panel. And after using this for a little while now to play quite a few different games, I think people are just really dramatic. Now, if you're a consistent CSGO or Valorant player, I wouldn't recommend it because you're definitely going to notice the smearing. But unless you're playing these high reaction time FPS games, you're really not going to notice much of a problem. Now, of course, it does bring into question what is the point of a 200 hertz display then if for the titles where that actually matters, i.e. esports titles, it's not a great panel to use for. Well, there's a solid point there, but a high refresh rate really just makes using your computer in general feel a lot nicer and a lot smoother. And considering that the display actually has free sync, there's really just no downside to it having such a high refresh rate, even if you're not going to be able to hit that in the vast majority of titles. It does mean that on your day-to-day -day usage of the system, it's going to feel pretty nice. And while again, it's not the best panel if you're a competitive gamer if you're someone that likes to have a great desktop experience and you want to take your gaming to another level without actually having to bump up to a much higher resolution like 1440p or 4k because you don't really have the hardware to handle that well, this display is pretty much right now the ultimate combo to really pair with a mini pc because while we took a look at this same um 780 xtx running at 1440p we had to use FSR and some titles to really get some good levels of performance. And something like this already gives you more screen real estate, you're going to get more FOV, while also not hitting your GPU as hard as 1440p would. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. So let me know what you think down below. Is this a great combo right here? I personally think that right now this is pretty much the way to go if you want a display to go with your mini PC. Of course, if you are a competitive gamer, if you are someone that is looking to play Valorant, looking to play CSGO, looking to play these games where a high speed reaction time and getting as clear of an image as possible is important, there are other displays that you can take a look at and I'll link some of the best ones down below. But I think that this display paired with something like the UM780 XTX or even the Sur 6 Max, it would pretty much make for a really great overall computing experience. Whether you're using your desktop or whether you're gaming, you're going to have an improved experience and you're not really sacrificing all that much to get that. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.